this on record? This meeting is being recorded. Got it. All right. I'm going to let other people in, but I'm going to speak. I'm going to be talking about what we're going to be talking today is dowsing for spirit. And as my topic today, which we'll uh, work on, I'll show you some stuff. And um, what I'm going to do today is talk about how dowsing works with connection to spirit, uh, how, how it's used. Back in the day, those uh, dowsing, you got a stick, had two sides out, you would hold on to it. And you would douse, try to find water, minerals, different things on the property. And it kind of morphed into what it is today with spiritualism and spirit. Uh, we use pendulums a lot. We use pendulums a lot when we're working with spirit. Uh, and pendulums also all come with this kind of nice little cord on them, crystal at the end of it. Could have any other crystal you want. And I always tell people, there's always something usually at the end of the pendulum. So there's, there's a, a bead or something at the end of it. I explained to individuals that this bead is not to hold on to like this. The bead is actually to put between your fingers and to hold it. Hold it fell. <laughs> uh, but hold the bead up through your fingers, not to hold it with your index fingers. What happens with holding it like this, the pulses in your fingers actually make it move, actually make it move back and forth. So by allowing it to just hang through your fingers, it actually what happens is you allow it to have its own free movement. When you start doing the pendulum, what you do is you hold it still, hold it still, and then ask the question and allow it to move. And spirit will actually move it. Well, yes, no questions. You use different boards, different vibrations with pendulums. And there's our type of dowsing. You use different boards. There's the magic eye board. You got this little magic eye with yes and no on it. There's an older one that I, I have that's got this one, got a little magic eye board. Uh, but the question here with that is, no matter what you use, whether you use a cloth, a book, it's got charts in it, set the vibration as far as what you want the thing to do. You want it to move a certain way for yes, a certain way for no, vibration with that. Uh, but pendulums are actually a way of connecting with yes and no answers from the spirit world. Am I going to move? Yes. Am I going to? And you have charts that you can actually put in the vibration. Uh, so it's a question of how you want to use the pendulum. But pendulums will give you answers, but you have to address the pendulum, discern who's coming through, try to discern who's coming through the pendulum, who's speaking to you who's working with you through the spirit world with the pendulum, and that you have true answers coming from the pendulum. But I notice that you get a lot of false answers is when you hold the pendulum from, from, the, from, from the cord, and you hold it from that. That'll give you a lot of false answers, a lot of false vibrations, because the pulse is in your fingers. I have a, one that I had made for me. It's a... Uh, got lapis on the end of it but it's got a very long chain but it doesn't have anything on the chain and now i can drop that right over my without me having any control over the pendulum i can get i can ask the questions <clears throat> so pendulums do work vibration uh, many years ago people will talk about uh ouija boards don't use a ouija board don't touch a ouija board it's kind of a little form of dowsing because you're moving your asking spirit to move this this pochette around the table i always explain to people make your own vision board i call them vision boards make your own vision board take the vision board set it of whatever question you want on the vision board you create it you create the vision board and then make your own pochette 
that you can move through the vision board. What happens with that is through the vision board of you creating it, you've actually set everything in motion from your own energy, your own vibration, and you have placed that in your vision board. You've had nobody at a factory or somebody else, somewhere else, putting their energy into it. You've actually placed your own into that vibration. The dowsing rods come in different forms, different situations with dowsing rods. Dowsing rods, I have a set of dowsing rods here. They're just copper wires. They've got a piece of copper wire here. Ten little things here. And by pointing these, by holding on to them, you can actually feel the energy. It'll make, it'll feel the energy of the vibration. So what will happen is you'll feel the energy of the vibration. You'll feel the energy of it. And what happens is you want to, to allow it to move. And dowsing rods actually, dowsing rods work very well for yes or no questions. By, by holding the dowsing rods. So it's not going to be, like right now, these dowsing rods are going to be affected by this screen, by the energy of this computer in front of me. They're going to be affected by it. They're going to, they're... <laughs> They get affected by people's energy fields. They get affected by energy that's actually propelling itself in the room. So what you want to try to do is focus it somewhere where it's not focusing added energy, but like at a wood table or something in front of you and ask the questions. By asking the questions, you can train, train it. These are open or cross for you. It could open for yes, cross for no. So you can you can train these just as you would a pendulum straight ahead for yes crossways for no crossways for yes you get to train your how you want to receive the energy how you want to receive it when i do table tipping and i do table tipping here in the organization uh by placing lightly putting your hands on the table the table will move through the room and take off I have got, I want to like, I don't say, but I've got the table trained to move for yes, stop for no. Some people have trained their, trained their vibrations for yes, no, uh, 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 yes and no with the vibration. So the question here is when you have uh, how you work with it, the best ones I've found. I can't find them on the internet anywhere. I can't. I haven't been able to find them. But these were made by Zots, C Z O T S. And these are made out of like stainless steel. They've got a little thing on the end of it. They got some really cool holders for them because the holders come right off. And the holders actually sit in here and hold it. And these work, I found out that these work the best because I have no control over these. They'll move, and they'll move. <laughs> they'll go. Uh, I really like these. I haven't been able to ever find. I found one, one, one time years and years ago. Never found any more. Never found any more. <laughs> They're made by so it's C-O-T-S. So the question here with uh, pendulums, working with uh, the energy of an object, the energy of a vibration. What we're talking today about is finding your connection to spirit your vibration, how you work with different tools, different vibrations. And we're going to go through a little bit of stuff here of how to train yourself to understand how this all works. By the pendulums, you don't have to clear the pendulum every time you use it. All you have to do is hold the pendulum, hold it, and just stop it and pull down on it and stop it. And it'll clear. As long as you don't have to let anybody, all everybody in the whole world run off of your pendulum and start messing with it, you've got the pendulum cleared for you, for your highest and best. And then you always make sure the pendulum has stopped. It is stopped in midair. It's not still moving. It's stopped. And then what happens? Then that way, when you do ask the question, it's going to start to move because it'll move because it. I have asked it a question. Um, so. 
you want to train that and it'll ask questions and sure you're going to get some answers probably sometimes you go well if Finland told me that it hasn't happened it hasn't happened people think that spirit is on our time zone they aren't never on our time zone could be on a time zone that's 20 years from now <laughs> not on our time zone so you have to ask questions of spirit very specific. You have hap, haphazardly asked situations in the vibration. Then you, what you're going to do is you're going to have all this whole situation of, of understanding. See, because what you have to do is you have to allow yourself to set the energy first of what you expect from spirit. That comes down to either getting med meditating, getting quiet, understanding, having a conversation with your higher self, having a conversation with your guides. It's when you sit still and you get very quiet with your guides and you have a conversation with them of what you want to see, what you want to experience when you use your tools. The pendulums are just one tool that you can use with connection to spirit. So you use the dowsing rods, you train them to go yes, go no, read the energy. You just don't want to point them at somebody or something that has energy within it. So it'll start to move. It'll start to move. Uh, I think Jennifer's dog wants to be part of the show. <laughs> uh, but the question here. Uh, so the question here is everything is part of energy of the vibration. But I said, make your own shed, make your own vibration of answering yes and no questions. Um, figure out what works. And, I, and that's why when I teach, I teach all kinds of different forms of mediumship. Uh, there are a true connection to spirit through guides, through people in the spirit world. But allowing yourself to get out of your way, get out of your vibration, get out of your connection of the vibration. Because it's no matter what you use, what you actually put energy into, dowsing for spirit is through pendulums, dowsing through pochettes, moving that getting a table to move back and forth, yes, no questions. Everything has energy within the vibration, even the cards you use, even the, the connection to cards, the vibration of cards. Uh, when I ask myself personal questions, because spirit doesn't really like talking to people that actually have the gift, so they want us to help others, but then they think that we're okay, and they'll go take care of us, so we don't need the answers. <laughs> so then I have my own little personal card deck I use for me, I put my own vibration, my own energy into the card deck. When I teach tarot or work with tarot with individuals, the card deck you, you use for people, uh, people, that is the card deck for them. That is their vibration for public. There should be a card deck that you have in your life that's just strictly yours. It's got your energy on it, it's got the vibration, and your and you're pulling the energy from that card deck that you placed in it every time you ask a question. It all comes down a lot of the times when we do mediumship working with spirit, it's psychometry. It's the energy of the object, energy of the vibration, energy of connection here. So when you're looking at uh, dowsing rods, pick a dowsing rod, pick one that you can just cut to, cut, you cut like a metal hanger, kind of a metal hanger, both ends, boom, boom, you've got dowsing rods. But I think it's kind of cute. Back in the day, we had all kinds of metal hangers. Now today, yeah, not too many now. But back in the day, we had them. We, had, we could just make dowsing rods <laughs> all the time. And and you can make a pendulum out of anything. It doesn't really matter. It just has to hang from a string. It has to have a little bit of weight to it. Pendulum. Pendulum out of just about anything you want to make one out of. But it's according on how you create it, how you place it in motion, how you create this. Because the first dowsing, the first pendulum was actually in Greece. They actually found a stone table with letters all over it. But it had a thing in the center of it 
that would move to give the Greek individuals and people answers. So this has been going on for a while. It's just incorporated. We have our own little personal pendulums now, personal vibrations. But the question is what kind of energy you want to bring through. Clear crystals are, are batteries. So clear crystals are going to attract whatever energy you place into it. If you get yourself a pendulum, make sure that the crystal on the end of it is a real one, not plastic, a real crystal connected to a real one. <laughs> uh, the one I really like is I have one that's got lapis on the end of it. It's got lapis. Very intelligent stone, very inspirational, uh, psychic stone. It opens up the third eye. I've got lapis on the end of the one I had made for me. So I like that one. I like that for me. Now, you might go, ooh, I like, I like hematite, or I like this, or I like that. Whatever stone works for you, figure that out. Figure that vibration. Because you can always, when you walk in the store to buy one, just kind of take the pendulums out, ask the question, is this pendulum good for me? Is it a good one for me? It'll answer you. It'll answer if it wants to go home with you. I always tease people. It's like the wands on Harry. It's like the wands on Harry Potter. The things will pick you, <laughs> or they'll pick you. The, the pendulum will pick you. Whether you whether you're in a store looking at it, and trying to get it to answer yes or no for you, but the pendulum that you're looking for will pick you. Whatever energy that you need at that given moment, that moment in your vibration. So pick what you feel is best. The same thing with the dowsing rods. Find some dowsing rods that you have a connection to. They, they, they work for you. They fit like I have those dots, dowsing rods. And everybody tells me, said, oh, no, though, these rods, they have to be copper. And, oh, my God, they got to be. No. These are made out of stainless steel. And they work extremely well. But they work extremely well for me. Now, you might get a pair of these, you know, now like this. They don't like this, though. But they work very well for what I feel. And that's why I explained this. Always do what works for you, what fits the vibration for you. Not because someone said, oh, my God, you shouldn't do that one. Oh, no. Do what it works for you, fits the vibration for you. <laughs> and you can create your own. Get some wire, wrap it around a stone, hook a little string to the end of it, and boom, you got a pendulum. And you've created it. You've made the right pendulum yourself. Allow yourself to do that. When you do the cards, when you do the cards, just the, the movement, the change, that's like slapping the energy, knocking the energy together to make it. You don't have to wash them all in sage and wash them in sea salt and put them out to the sun. It's making a loud noise and changing the energy field around the object. Slapping your hands together, hitting a pot, making a loud noise will dissipate whatever energy is around it. I, when I teach people this, they go, no, it can't be that easy. We got to smudge. We got to we got light a fire. We've got to smudge the whole place. No, we don't. There's let now energy, but it's still your intention, your physical and spiritual intention. Is. What your intention is is when you're doing it. Whatever your intention is, is what you're going to receive once you clear the object. And my first thought, if I was going to clear this pendulum, my first thought is go. You know, it's probably got really nasty energy and really terrible energy. And I try to clear this. I'm not going to clear the nasty energy off of it. Because now I've already got it in my head that it's got it on it. When you look to clear something or clear something or clean something from your being, ask yourself, tell yourself, you know, this is beautiful energy. I expect beautiful, positive energy in this situation. For my highest and best, for my highest and best, and then clear it. When I teach mediumship, if your first thought is you can't do it, you won't be able to do it. Your thought has to be that you can do it. Oh, I can get names. I love it when people say, oh, I can't get names. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, my God, I can't. You're physically and spiritually telling spirit, I can't do that. Don't bother me with that. I can't do it. Make sure that you're comfortable with what you're bringing into the vibration you are. 
whatever tools that you use for your mediumship, your connection to the spirit world, whatever that may be, wherever that may be. I did a thing with psychometry and psychometry, a little bit of dowsing and vibrations with energy. Well, what I took is I took a, a bowl of water, bowl of water, and I got some different colored candles. Didn't have to be, I don't know, they don't have to be different colored. I just like the different, I got the seven candles of the chakras. I lit them. I had the bowl, a bowl of water in front of me. And then I asked spirit for inspiration. Then I inspired myself of what candle I was going to pick up first. I picked the candles up and I dropped the wax into the water. As much as I feel needs to be dropped from that candle. Put the candle back, grab another one. Until I've gone through all seven candles and dropped the wax in the water. You'll be very surprised what what symbols and what vibration shows up in the water. What shows up in the water. It's called wax readings, but... What shows up within the water will get your attention, will answer a question for you. Sometimes there's names, there's symbols, there's vibrations that will show up within the water. But you have to clear the space, clear the vibration. They're not saying clear the space around you, space within you, clearing that space, clearing that vibrational space. I wish I could say, oh, my God, you just go straight right into it. Well, we teach mediumship here in Casadega. When we teach mediumship here in Casadega, we teach mediumship here. Uh, this whole vibration of mediumship and vibration of that is to connect to you, connect to your vibration of what actually works for what actually uh, what actually works for you, what actually clicks the vibration for you, what works for you. Because when you are looking at your mediumship, it's not one solid road. One road fits the vibration. It's not just one road. It's a, a road to take you to wherever you need to go. Wherever you need to be. If it's dowsing, and I have a lady that teaches dowsing, and that's what she uses for her mediumship. Uses, that's all she does is dowsing. But she's very good at it. She's very capable at it. She's very good at it. And it just works for her. It just fits her vibration. Whether somebody uses tarot, the dowsing, the pendulums, the vibrations. A lot of times people will ask you for something that belongs to you. So they give you a reading. Psychometry. Touching the object that actually you put your energy on. So when you're putting energy on an object, the more you come to the object, the more I pick up this pendulum. The more I use it, the more energy I put on it. So I've been using this pendulum probably, I've had this pendulum 20 years. Every time I use the pendulum, I put more energy on it. I don't let people touch it. My wife likes to come to my room and mess with my stuff, but <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, that's a different story. I try to hide stuff. <laughs> uh, different story when she's in there. But, but the question is, is I asked, vibration of spirit and i don't let people kind of mess with the pendulums i have a set of pendulums that i let people touch they can move it up. i can touch those can't touch the one i use for my private information that's what you have to do you have to save something for your private information i have a tarot deck that i have that i've had for for my grandmother had it and she had the tarot deck and it passed to my mother then finally passed to me I don't anybody master that deck. It's, it's by the energy of my grandmother, my mother, and mine on it. So when I ask questions, I'm in contact with my grandmother and my mother on the spirit world. When I ask it questions, when I have a communication with it. So that's what you're doing. You're just asking your guides for that, to get communication for you. We have a tendency in our lives, in our lives, to ask for everyone else, everything else in our lives, everything else. And every once in a while, we have to, I told a lady today in the reading, every once in a while, we have to have a come to Jesus moment with our guides. Come to Jesus moment. <laughs> every once in a while, because we have to have that moment with ourselves. Speak to our higher self. Speak to our physical self. Allow ourselves to be on the same page as we move forward. Every once in a while, you have to have that little moment with yourself. 
allow yourself to make sure you're, everybody's on the same page. Everybody's in the right direction. We're at spirit guides. Everybody's more in the right direction. Spirit guides are assigned to you when you enter this earth plane. But the major connection you have in your life is to your higher self. Sure, your guides are around you. Sure, your guides follow you to try to help. But the information that you receive from the world of spirit is through your higher self. And if you're on the same page with your higher self, then that information becomes more clear, more pure, in the vibration that comes to you. So by working with these tools, by where am I dowsing for spirit? You can use the pendulum, you can use the dowsing rods in a house to feel energy in the house. You feel something negative in the house, something in the house, something in the vibration. You use the dowsing rods to find the energy in the house where the energy is the strongest where the energy is the strongest within the space. And that way, if I take these rods around my house, I find a house, part of my house that's very like hot, a lot of energy and that's like, I'll take a picture of the space and very most likely I'll get orbs. I'll get some kind of energy signature within that space because the dowsing rods have told me that's a hot spot. That's a hot spot. There's something there, There's something in that vibration. So you're always asking yourself, especially if you're having stuff going on in your home, Take the dowsing rods. Go through your home and see when the dowsing rods move. They will move for radios. They will move for microwaves. They will move for TV sets. They will move for things that are run electrically in your home because of the current of electricity. But if you're somewhere where you're not pointing it at a TV set, not pointing it at something electrical, and there's a lot of energy within that space, then there's a very good possibility spirits either there or there's something definitely going on in that space of your home. So that's why you use the dowsing rods for that. You use them for communicating to your higher self, asking yourself questions. Asking yourself questions from what you would like an answer. Dowsing rods work as I will take one dowsing rod, one, and I will point it. I showed this thing. This is magic eye. I've got to get another camera. There we go. But I can take the dowsing rod and point at this and ask my guide a question and see where this moves. Like a pendulum, dowsing rod will move and place itself where it needs to be. I like little second answers every once in a while. I'll use the pendulum and I get an answer. I go, oh, I don't know. I don't like that answer. <laughs> then I'll use the dowsing rod and go, ooh, I got the same answer. So, <laughs> so I get a second opinion. <laughs> so. Sometimes we want second opinions when we ask spirit of questions. We want kind of would we'll take one answer, but is that really the answer or do we need to get another answer? So don't do, don't just stay with one answer and go, oh, that's gospel. That's good. No, no, no. Get a couple answers. Clear, ask the question, get an answer. You're not quite happy with that answer. You're saying, you know, that should have, no, nah, it doesn't feel right. Then clear the pendulum. Do it again. Do it again. Because you want to clear the pendulum. See, if you do like one time, you ask the question, it says no. You go, oh, that's strange. Then you do it again, it says yes. You go, okay. Then you clear it again and see what you get. If you get a yes or no, it's usually about three. Body, mind, spirit, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Three or more times, you pretty much got your answer. So, but it should clear pretty good because if you're asking the right question, the answer would go. Because I usually start off, is my name Lewis? No, that thing better say yes. <laughs> it better say yes what I'm doing. Is my name Lewis? So, because I it better say yes. It starts saying no. We've got a little bit of an issue there in the spirit world that there's something going on because I my name is not something else. So the question here is ask the question that you know the answer of. You, do you know the answer of it? I live at certain such and such a street. So you say yes to that's the street. But I'll mess them up. I'll ask another address. I'll go, I live here. And it should say no, because I don't live there. I don't live at that street address. I don't live there. It should say no. So I discern the spirit with questions that I know the answer to. I know the answer to them. And the board, when I'm doing the pendulum, should say the right answer, should say the right answer. 
If not, I'll clear the board. I'll make vibration and I'll start again. But I ask questions I know the right answer to. Discerning the spirit. Now, over in the spirit world, there are people in the spirit world that will just play games. Uh -huh. Mind me, the spirit world is a lot with people that are like trying to hack your computer. Huh. Want to play games, want to play stuff. So you have to discern the spirit before you allow the spirit in. Allow the spirit in. So you're discerning them. You're just asking questions you know, allowing the energy to flow, not vibration. When you're working with spirits, you should be in the flow. And if you do any kind of yoga, any kind of breathing, any kind of exercise, you know the breathing exercises brings you into a connection. What you want to do is try to get to that connection before you start moving all this. Get into a breathe. Breathe in for seven, hold it for seven, breathe out for seven. Do it like six, seven times. Breathe in, breathe out, get yourself in a moment, then do it. Don't watch some kind of crazy TV show and then run right over and start working with your pen up. Get a moment, breathe, bring yourself to balance, clear the energy, clear the vibration, and then go in to speak in the spirit. Then go in and do it that. Not just rushing back and forth. Because when we teach here, we have you, you go to heal here in the back of the church, you should sit for a few moments before you start the healing. Same thing with mediumship. You just don't run in, sit down, and start reading. You should take a moment, take a breath, take a moment before you start the connection, before you start the vibrational connection to get the right answers, to get the right vibration for you. If you don't do that, then what happens is you start getting mixed, mixed messages from the spirit world. And that's really we don't want mixed messages. We want the messages that are connected to us. And as I said, highest and best and nothing else. Your highest and best. What's best for you? There's some things in our lives we probably aren't supposed to know. Not supposed to know. We're going to ask till our, our mind goes crazy. Spirit's just not going to tell us. We're not supposed to know that. It's not within our freedom to know that. Because maybe there's something in the universe that you're supposed to affect. You have to get through that situation. The spirit can't change it. You have to take that path. That path has been that path has been chosen, not because it's to, to disrupt your auric field. It is for you to affect the universal energy. You have to go there. You have to, I had a client years ago said, "Lois, I was just in your office. I left your office and I got hit by a car. Somebody hit my car. You should have seen that." I said, "Was it within the view?" But he got hit by the car, ended up in the hospital, in the emergency room, met the nurse that was working there. He started dating the nurse, and now they've been married like 15 years. Now, am I to say that the accident was supposed to get him to where the nurse was because he wasn't supposed to, he couldn't meet her any other way so that he could actually meet her to start dating her so they could get married? Was there a reason for him to be there? Now, if I would have said, you're going to have that turn going on, what have you still gotten to the hospital? What have you still been there? What have you still met this woman? I don't know. But the question is, sometimes we, the path is picked. And individuals tell me, we pick a path, and we pick a path, and all the thing is already picked for us, and what is our, what is our journey then? Our journey, I think, in our lifetime is mostly because we're, supposed to pick the journey. The designations have been chosen for us. They've been chosen. We can look at a journey being miserable with it, or we can look at the next door opening and what is the next door? What is the next connection Spirit has for us? They brought us here, so there must be some reason why we got brought to this space. It's always a journey. Never the destination. There's designations in your life that you'll have to go through. But how you move through them, how you manage your way through them, that is the free will of choice. That is your true essence. The same thing with the pendulums and the dowsing for spirit. It's your idea of what you expect. What do you want to put into the dowsing mods? What do you want to put into the pendulum? What do you want to put into this stuff? What kind of energy do you want to put into it? And then allow yourself to move, not 
we're not all going to move to that pious condition and go, oh, I'm so spiritual. <laughs> no. We're going to be as spiritual as we can for ourselves. Trying to get that understanding for ourselves. No matter how bad your life is, there has to be a door, a doorway that opens, that propels you in a direction in your life. It's the doorways you're looking for. I taught mediumship. I taught meditation last week. And meditation is not going to the mountain, drinking the water, and laying in the temple. That's not, that's not it. It is your journey from the base of the mountain to the temple. It's what is going along the path. What did you walk on? What did you see? What did you connect to as you made your journey to the mountain? That has a strong connection to do in our lives. What is the journey you pick as you make your way to the destination? If you hang with people that are completely nuts, the journey will probably get a little nutty on the way to the temple. It will. It will get there. If you associate yourself with people that aren't really in that vibration for you. You have to allow yourself to draw people in your life that are going to be positive, connected to you, the higher vibration for you, bringing you to a higher sense of consciousness, allowing you to rise yourself, raise yourself to that connection within your life that you're in like a flow. And you understand that you're moving in the right direction. If all hell is breaking loose, don't jump off the mountain. Go back to the car, drive back a ways, take another look, and then venture forth again. Don't jump off the mountain. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to be any good for you, and your guides aren't jumping off after you. So they just wait for you to climb out. So don't jump into some situation when it's not working. That's why the dowsing the pendulums and asking questions for yourself, because you get a chance to say, "Does this work for me? Is this?" Is this good for me? Is this good for me? Sometimes we want that second opinion, you know. We know that it's not. <laughs> but we want that second opinion from spirit or from our higher self to go, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. It's either good or not. But we want that second opinion. So we want that opinion of how that's supposed to work. When you do cards, you do vibration, you just slap the cards, you just pop them pop the cards. You get that, that sound of that sound or that energy sound to break the energy within the card deck. Whether you do the, whether all this stuff with the wax readings, the rope readings, the smoke readings, the fire readings, doesn't matter what type of readings I teach you to do, it still comes to the point of what energy you've placed in to the vibration and does it fit you? Does it fit the vibration for you. That's what you have to ask yourself. It's not the question that I tell you, oh yeah, that's you read that way, you walk that way, you do it that way. It's not going to work that way. It works the way that spirit has planned you on your road because somewhere up the road you're going to need this. You're going to need something that fits you, that fits the vibration for you. You might, you're going to need it. You're going to have that connection up the road. Things that you learn. What you're doing is you're setting your psychic vocabulary. You're setting all this vibration as you move through this life. You're setting your connection to certain objects, certain situations, and certain vibrations. So you're, you're going to look at something a whole lot different than I will look at it because you've gone through it a different way. You've seen it in a different light. You, you understand how it's going to be for you. That's why I always explain to people, don't take everybody else's advice and go, oh, my God. So if you look at it and your first instinct is, oh, no, that's not good. No, no. I don't care if the whole world is telling you, oh, my God, it's perfect for you, dear. Go that way. Your first thought is, no, 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 no. No, no, not good for me. Listen to yourself. Listen to you. First thought, first impression. When you ask the question here is spirit with the dowsing rods, with the pendulum dowsing and doing all this stuff. If your first thought is, I don't like that answer. I don't, I don't care for that. I don't like that answer. I don't care for that. 
listen to yourself. Clear the pendulum, clear the rods, do what you need to do with it and ask again. Don't take it as face value because it's probably not. It's your first thought, first impression of what you feel with the situation. That, is, that works out extremely well when we're working with spirit. When you're working with the spirit world, I had a client, I had a person in my class the other day was telling me, well, why do we have to mess with guides? Don't we just mess with our higher self? I mean, just, why do we have to mess with guides? Why don't we just go straight to the source, go right to God, go right to the source? Uh, sometimes I think of life as us working our way up through the building. We have guides on every floor, people that help us, people that encourage us on every floor. Some of us can't get right to the top floor. We don't tap that elevator to the penthouse. We got to walk the stairwell. We got to go up there. We got to go climbing up towards when we get to the higher vibration. So we need these other entities, these other vibrations around us to help us, to encourage us, to help us, to bless us. And they've been sent with us. Not every guide in your life is a guide that just shows up. They are not. Guides have been placed in your life because you had picked them. They have been through your lifetime for lifetimes. And lifetimes. Through this earth plane, through this existence, through this dimension and others. They've been with you through countless lifetimes. So when you look at them, when you, before you entered this earth plane, you looked at these people and said, I know. you look at these people and you said, I know you. I know you. I know who you are. And you brought them down as a guide to help, to give you information. Not to lead your life, but to bring forth the information through the vibration. Information. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of information do I need? Explain to people, you don't want a, you don't want a foot doctor when you need brain surgery. Might not need the foot doctor right away. <laughs> need a brain surgeon. So when we start working with our guides and people in the spirit world, we're not looking for somebody that doesn't have any expertise. I love it when people ask me, say, Lewis, I need money. Ask Uncle Joe. I said, is Uncle Joe good with money? No, no, he went bankrupt quite a few times. He never had any money. Well, what are we talking to Uncle Joe for? He doesn't understand money. Just because he went to the other side doesn't mean he got rich. He doesn't understand it. So why aren't you asking somebody that actually has some kind of expertise in bringing that? Same thing with health. Same thing with everything else in our life. Why would we ask somebody that wasn't healthy on this earth plane to bring us health? Why would we ask that? Ask for the people, the situations. Is well, you've got relatives. Because I had a guide tell me, a master teacher years ago, said, told me in some lifetime, some lifetime, you were perfectly healthy. You had plenty of money, beautiful relationships. Everything worked out exactly the way it was supposed to do, and it was beautiful. You had a lifetime like that. So all we have to do is allow ourselves to go back and accept that lifetime into this one. Be able to accept the blessings. We have a hard time in this lifetime, people, to say blessings over ourselves. We want to bless everyone else, we want to bless everything around us, but we can't bring ourselves to bless ourselves because we think it's, oh my God, it's sacrilegious. My God, why am I just asking for me? I should be sharing my, oh, why am I bored? No, 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 I can't do that. Why not? If you're not healthy, you're not well enough to do this, you don't have enough money to travel, you don't have money, you don't have any way to go help others. So what good are you going to be to the other situation if you can't get there? You can't get there. You can't manage yourself there. Then how are you going to affect the world? You should be pretty healthy, should stay pretty vibrational healthy, have prosperity and money to travel. So ask yourself, tell your guides, be able to accept it. The same thing with the dowsing, different vibration. When you're dowsing for this stuff and looking for this stuff, be able to accept it. Be able to accept the vibration from spirit. That's what you have to do. You can tell yourself, oh, no, no, no. Accept the vibration from spirit. Allow them to speak to you. 
you might be looking at something spirits going no 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 you're not no that's a no 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 i don't care how many times you move the pendulum that's a no we might want a yes but for this moment in our lives it's a no it's going to be a no for a while until until we move past this vibration but remember we're all on a path we're all on a journey in our lives through our lifetime through our vibration and as we grow in this earth plane, we've had things happen in our lives that we have these symbols that are set up in our lives. And as we move through our lives, we see those symbols again. They're either going to remind us of this really beautiful time, or they're going to remind us of some, some tough time in our life, some, some place that we don't want to return back to. So don't go there. Don't, if that symbol appears in your vibration, that is not a place to venture. Because spirit has shown that to you for a reason. Because they know back here, bad symbol. If they place it up here and you're trying to do something, there's a bad symbol. There's The spirit doesn't want you there. They don't want you venturing into that direction. We shouldn't have to, when I give readings to individuals, we shouldn't have to get to a point at the end of a cycle and people say, oh, I don't want to do that cycle again. Oh, my God, that cycle is so terrible. It's awful. Why we keep doing cycles that are awful? Why keep moving through that vibration? Start changing the mind thought, changing the vibration, changing the situations within your life. To get a good reading from dowsing and get a good reading from pendulums and different things, you have to change the mind thought. You have to change that vibration of mind. Allow yourself. I do affirmations every single day, every day. I'm not broken. I don't think I am. I could be. I don't know. <laughs> I could be. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I say I say them every day, affirmations every single day, every day, every day, every day. And I do repetition with them. Not because I'm broken. What I'm doing is I'm changing past memory, past teachings, past stuff that has littered the vibration within my being. I'm clearing it. So leaving a space within my vibration to attract new. No sense of me being cluttered with stuff I don't need anymore. Let's clutter myself with stuff I need. Bringing stuff forth that I absolutely need in my life. So ask yourself, I am healthy. I am abundant. I am wealthy. I am connected to all that is. I am a, I, I am help. You do what well. I am, I am, I am. Do all the affirmations and say them in your head. Say them in your vibration. Say them. I say them when I wake up in the morning. I say them when I go to bed at night. I say them during the day. I say them all the time. Not because I'm trying to, like, oh, my God, look, I got so much junk. No, I'm just trying to clear space, allowing spirit to know that I'm on top of it, and I would like them to move this, change this, reorganize this. And that's what you're doing. You're trying to be the highest and best you can, because if you get to spirit side of life, you're going to be everything you've ever been. Through every lifetime, every incarnation, every vibration, everything you've ever been, is what you're going to be when you get there. Everything. The glamour of everything. You are the best you ever were right now. Because right now, live, live, right now, living on the surface plane, you are a conglomerate of every lifetime, every incarnation. You have all the gifts from all. When you first walked, you first took your first breath. Many lifetimes ago, you have all that energy within your cells. So you can call upon your cells and go, <laughs> bring that. Let's do that. Let's accomplish that. Allow your guides to do that for you. Because that's what they're there for, to help you up the staircase. And then sometimes to carry you when you're too weak to get up the next staircase. So you can get the view. So you can get that connection within your vibration. But the reason I use these a lot for personal vibration, see, personal vibration, because this way it gives you your own personal answer with your own personal energy, your own connection to you. So it gives you that yes and no answer, that yes and no vibration. And with table tipping, it's a form of psychometry, it's a form of doubt, it's a form of yes and no questions. But when you touch a wood table and you allow yourself to 
feel the spirit. You can actually feel them moving through the table, touching you. you actually feel them. You actually feel the energy of spirit in that space. That's why people cry. They do all kinds of things on the table because they have such a strong feeling of the presence of spirit. And what you want to do with this thing is when you get in your quiet moment, you get in that moment of spirit, that connection to spirit, in that quiet moment in your life. You want to get to that vibration that you have. Oh, my God. I tell people, think health or think whatever you want to so strongly that your body has no other option but to comply. Think it so strongly. Don't let any other thoughts come into your mind. Just think it so strongly. Your body has no other option but to comply. Because within your cells is that lifetime. Perfectly healthy. Prosperity. Oh my God. Awesome. That is within your cells. So if you think so strongly, your body will have no other option but to try to comply. Unless the journey in this lifetime is a connection to the universal energy. But it doesn't mean the journey has to be bad towards the universal energy. It doesn't have to be bad. It just has to be that direction. That direction in your life. So you ask yourself, what do you expect from your guides? What do you expect from them? Not what I expect. Same thing as uh, I could do the pendulums for you, and I can do the dowsing rods, and I can do all the stuff for you. But it's still me working with my guides, my spirit teachers, touching the rods, trying to get the answer for you. It's when you get in that quiet moment and talk to your guides, then you have that direct communication with them. Even though you might not see them, you don't hear them, you don't. You don't feel them, but you know they're there. You have like knowing that they're around. You'll have a stronger connection because it's you going directly to that connection. And that's why I, I wanted you to learn some of this stuff as connection. Because if you have the connection, if you understand it, then you can make it happen. It might not work the first day. It might not work the first day. Might not work the first moment, but as I explained to people, when you do the pendulum, when you do this, that knob, that pebble on the end of that piece of metal, that that thing on the end of the pendulum, is not there for decorations. It's not to hold on to with your two fingers. It's not to do that because your fingers have pulses in them. That thing is to hook through your fingers. So you have no control over it. I have it. I got to get my camera. I have it through my fingers. So I have no control over it. And then I ask my question. Then I have no control over the pendulum. If I hold it like this, I'm going to have control over it because my pulses within my heartbeat make this move. So when you're doing the pendulum, do that. Don't hold the dowsing rods towards electrical equipment. You go walking up to somebody, wherever their auric field is, this thing is going to move. If I move towards this camera, if I move towards the camera, the energy of this thing is going to make these dowsing rods move because of the computer. So when you're walking towards energy, it's going to make it open. It's going to going to feel the energy of the space. You're going to feel it. So it's how you train it, how you work with it. But if you ask the vibration yes or no questions, you can train the, 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 the rods to answer yes or no questions. You train them. But it shows just through a little bit of work. That's all. I just feel like the pendulum works the quickest. The quickest vibration is the pendulum to ask questions, to get an answer to the question of that. The wax readings I really like. I like the wax readings because I'm taking the seven candles, the seven colored candles, the seven colors of my chakra. Then I have an intuition. I take a meditative mode. 
Uh, then I pick up whatever candle I'm tuned to go to first. And I drop enough wax, whatever wax I feel needs to be dropped into the water. Then I'll put that down until I go through all seven candles. Then I look in the water and see what has appeared. What has shown itself to me? What has shown itself? What symbol has showed up? What symbol, what vibration, what vibration showed up? Gives you a lot of information. The question is, is it does that might work for you. You might say, oh my God, that's perfect. I never heard of that. <laughs> uh, flame card readings. Those work really well when you run a card over a can over a candle. Once you run it over a candle and let it do whatever you feel when you're ready, then just turn it over. There's people's faces, emblems, situations, names, different things will appear on the other side of that index card. So there's a lot of ways to get in contact with spirit. But the best way to get in contact with spirit, best way, no matter whether it's dowsing, whether it's pendulum, whatever this vibration is, does it work for you? Don't force yourself to do something. Just say, well, that Mr. Gates, he said I needed to do dowsing. Oh, God, I don't like it. I'm going to do it. No, no, <laughs> you're never going to get a good answer if you do that. Do it because it's something you go, I like that. That's a vibrational situation. You know, I, before we end this today, I think it's cute. Uh, years ago, when I was a kid, my mother taught me. What I did was I took pieces of paper. And it had different, uh, I, usually, I usually got an old book, book, book I didn't want to have, I didn't want to use anymore, I took an old book. And I cut pieces of paper out of the book. Out of the book, little paper, little things. And I dropped all these words and everything into the basket. Then I would put a lid on the basket and I'd shake the basket. Set the basket down, ask my question, open the basket. And with the words and different things, that vibration, a lot of the times, a sentence would appear and address the exact thing that I was asking. So there's little things you can do. And that might work. But the question is, is when you're doing this work, does it fit your vibration? If you're dowsing for spirit and dows, you want to do pen lemons, you want to do Ouija board, you want to. Whatever you feel that you need to do that fits you, that you have that connection to spirit. Maybe you do mirror gazing. Maybe you do candle gazing. Maybe you do something that makes you more meditative and more connected to spirit. Whatever that is, do that. Do that connection. But say your affirmations. Do your, I am healthy, I am abundant, I am this, I am that. Think of yourself when you go in meditation. Ask yourself to take you back to a time when you were extremely healthy, extremely balanced, extremely, I don't think we're all balanced. I think all of us are a little unbalanced. We just trying our best to get back to balance. We're never completely balanced in our life, so we wouldn't be here. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. So the question is, we're never completely balanced, but we're working towards that direction. Ask for yourself to be perfectly healthy, perfectly, perfect, whatever you feel is I am. And then watch what starts to affect you within your body, what starts to happen, because you accepted this perfect situation within your life. But overall, I feel like we are, we just have to find that balance in our life, that situation in our lives. Trust yourself. Everything is supposed to be there. We are a conglomerate of every lifetime. If we believe that, then we know that some like that. We weren't sick at every single lifetime. My God, we 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 took bad journeys. <laughs> there have been lifetimes we've been extremely healthy, extremely happy, extremely content. Go back there to those. Even though you pick this lifetime with the journey you're on, doesn't mean you have to finish the lifetime on the journey you're on. Don't have to do that. Doesn't have to work that way. The spirit, I know spirit has a sense of humor, but they don't have to laugh for your whole lifetime. <laughs> no, they don't. You need to say, no, no, I don't accept this, fix this, move this. But when you ask the questions, make sure they understand what you're looking for. And if you don't get the answer the first time, 
do it three times, no more than three, three times, body, mind, spirit, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Take the two out of three and say, okay, they answered me to yes twice. That should be the answer. Don't keep going. 20, 30 times, go. One time should work, but if you don't quite feel comfortable with that, then ask again. Then ask again, and that way you'll have at least two that would have been either yes or no. And then figure out which one fits the best for you. I hope you, we're going to start having classes every Thursday. So I'm going to start doing this every Thursday again, and we're going to be back into it. Uh, we've got, I saw my website. I think we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do one thing. With, I'm going to do some Lucerne. Then we're going to do one time. I'm going to let you talk. And we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do public readings, how to do readings. And each one of you that show up that day will get readings. And we'll show you how to do them, how to communicate with spirit. So that'll be a good time we can do that at one point but right now uh it's on my website just look at what topics i'll be doing and we'll be doing those every single week through through the end of the year all the way into the next year or so and if you're as Sarah, i said if you're looking for a topic that i haven't put down i haven't talked about and you think that i might know information about it tell me email me and we will talk about that we will talk about that some people want me to do i ching i ching online I Ching is kind of dry. It's kind of long. It's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to teach online because you have to be like presence to feel the energy. You can teach I Ching, but it's more of a connection to personal involvement. If you want a really good way to get in contact with spirit and connect to the spirit well, I Ching is an extremely powerful tool to use for personal communication personal really good way to connect on a personal level not reaching it's not ready it isn't to give everybody readings it is to allow you to go within and get your own so whatever works whatever fits the vibration for you and i hope you guys enjoyed today and i will see you next week the ones who show up next week i'll see you next week and this talk will be posted on youtube uh it'll be posted on youtube and you'll be able to see this whole thing on YouTube. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to get a hold of you for a reading. Uh, the best thing is just I am booked into let me just turn let me just turn off the turn off the recording.